Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to My View, My Opinion, the MVMO podcast that is. I am your host, MVO. Thank you for joining me. Listen, we get together on any given day at any given hour, like right now, (laughs) early this morning, and I present to you some trending story happening out there in the world. And I take the out there and I relate it to the in here, meaning what's happening on the inside of me and you, because I come from the perspective of what can we learn from it. In essence, I show you the life lessons that are in entertainment news. So if you like that kind of thing and you like to go a little bit deeper when it comes to talking about entertainment, this is the place for you. Got any questions about who I am, why you don't see me, you only hear me, all of that stuff, check down there in the description box. I promise you what you need to know is there. Now, before I launch into this bombshell exclusive that dropped this morning at 5 a.m., yes, sir, yes, ma'am, 5 a.m. from Variety Magazine, I do want to say a special thank you to all of you guys who've been sending in Cash App donations to the program. A lot of you have shared with your donation that you heard something here that really helped you make a decision in your life or helped you understand something you went through years ago. And so what I will tell y'all, when I see those kind of messages, whether it comes with $2 or it comes with $50, I don't care. It really just helps me know I'm doing exactly what I set out to do when I came on the internet, which is to share information with all of us that would help us be better in our lives. And you know, you have to find a creative way to do that because nobody wants straight up wheatgrass juice. You got to put a little pineapple. You got to put a little apple. So that's why I, I package this in entertainment because, well, most people are interested in these types of stories. But if I could tell you the real truth, like I really don't care about what's happening with a lot of these people we're talking about because they don't affect my life, <laughs> you know, but I know that these stories are trending and I know that people are interested in them. So while I'm talking to you about that, I can slip in a little life lesson here or there, a little gem for all of us. And in reading your comments, you helped me as well. So thank you so much for the donations. I appreciate all of you. I really do. Now, okay, I will tell y'all these networks, these uh, outlets are so sneaky. They drop these bombshell reports early in the morning before these executives, before these on-air talent folks get to their job so that that gives plenty of time for folks to start gossiping and talking about it and all making their opinions, you know, in the court of public opinion. And then when they get to work, they have to contend with all this stuff that's already been released to the media. That's how the Daily Mail did when they dropped those exclusive photos of TJ Holmes and Amy Robach. They did it before they went to work so that folks had a chance to talk about it and get it going. And then they had to show up and do a a show. So listen, this morning, as I said, at 5 a.m. today, Friday, December 9th, Variety Magazine released an exclusive story regarding Tiffany Cross and Rashida Jones, her boss, and who, as we know, Rashida is the president of MSNBC. Now, because this story was extremely long, but I read the entire thing, and I will tell you, it it is littered litter with bombshells everywhere. Um, I'm not going to review them all with you today because I don't want to keep you long. So I'm just going to give you the title of the story and that way you can Google it. And on your lunch break today, or when you're extremely bored, (laughs) you can read it for yourself. It's titled inside MSNBC president Rashida Jones's efforts to explain and contain the firing of Tiffany Cross. I do want to give a shout out to Matt Donnelly. This is his story. It belongs to him. He did the work. I did not. I'm just sharing his work with you. So shout out to Matt Donnelly over there at at Variety Magazine. Now I'm just going to skip around and share some of the most things that stood out to me. First of all, they start off talking about something that happened on November 7th at ABC's The View. Yes, The View. I actually was watching that show that day because, well, most of you know, The View is my favorite show. Barring emergencies in my life, I don't miss a show. Even when I'm traveling, I'm listening to the podcast if I'm on the five in traffic. (laughs) It don't matter if I'm on the plane, don't matter, right? It's my favorite show. Um, I don't watch a lot of televisions, but this is one show that I've watched for a lot of years. And so it's kind of like I feel like something's wrong if I don't watch it every day because I've done it for so many years, right? And so I will tell y'all that I remember this day that they were talking about, that Matt was talking about. And I remember how odd everyone looked that day. I didn't know what was going on. I just assumed that maybe somebody got into it behind the scenes. I had no idea what was really going on there. So let me start off reading a portion of this to you. It says, November 7th was a particularly busy Monday at The View. 
the long-running ABC talk series was prepping for the show that day before the midterm elections, a nail-biting event that ended up with the Democrats retaining control of the Senate and Republicans taking the House. To bolster the show's panel that day, led by moderator Whoopi Goldberg, Nicole Wallace was joining as a guest to discuss a new series she hosts for Peacock surrounding mental health awareness. As a former member of The View, Wallace was no stranger to the Upper West Side Manhattan studio where the show is filmed. But the woman she brought as her plus one surprised staffers and on-air talent, Wallace who currently hosts MSNBC's Deadline White House, arrived that morning accompanied by Rashida Jones, her boss and the president of MSNBC. Let me stop and say this. Do you guys realize how odd and bizarre it is for a network president to show up with her employee at a rival network MSNBC and ABC are rival networks. This is almost unheard of. But the story goes on to say that this is actually not unusual for Rashida. It says here, y'all, that Rashida is known in the industry to have accompanied some MSNBC talent to other media appearances, even on rival networks. But the visit to The View nonetheless raised eyebrows in the news business. This is what an insider who saw her there told Matt Donnelly. It's beyond odd that the head of a rival news operation at a different network would come to The View. It was bizarre. And they said what Rashida was doing while she was there was actually trying to go to different people like Whoopi Goldberg and Sonny Hostin. And yes, y'all, even some of the producers, she was trying to explain why she fired Tiffany and get them to talk about it. Now, what Rashida was going to do with what these people said is beyond me, right? Um, She was trying to justify the firing and get feedback from these people. I want to give you an example. They say here that one of the people she went to was Whoopi Goldberg. And this is what Matt writes here, y'all. He says, with no shortage of damage control, Jones walked the halls of The View in pursuit of Whoopi Goldberg first, sources said. Appearing at the door of her dressing room, Jones encountered Goldberg in final touches of hair and makeup while reviewing her notes for the day's show, said the sources. Rashida requested Goldberg's staff leave the room so they could have a private conversation, which Whoopi declined, sources say. Another View Insider present categorized the meeting as just a quick hello. Let me tell y'all, I know this is true because Whoopi's been the moderator of this show now for 14 years, I think maybe 15 now. Even before that, she was a co-host. And I will tell y'all, that is a landmark trait of Whoopi's. They have said for years, Whoopi does not get involved in any drama or mess behind the scenes at this show. That's why anytime stuff comes out about the show, it never really involves Whoopi because she just doesn't get involved in it. So I wasn't surprised that when Rashida asked all her staff to leave so she could talk to Whoopi, Whoopi said no. No. See, Whoopi knew what Rashida was there to do. It's like you fired her. And so you got to stand in that, Rashida. You know, going around to rival networks, to their talent, to discuss you. I mean, you're the president of MSNBC. I mean, you're the, 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 that's your queendom. Okay. Why do you feel so insecure about this firing that you have to go around discussing it with these different people? Listen, they also say she was unfazed by that. And they say here, Jones moved on and waited out most of the taping before requesting to speak to the View co-host, Sonny Hostin. Now, I assume that what Rashida didn't know is that Sonny Hostin and Tiffany Cross are actually friends. Um, Tiffany Cross and Sonny Hostin, Angela Rye, Joy Reid, it's a host of them. They have what they call a black journal, black girl journalistic group. They go on, a, a includes Jamel Hill as well. They go on a trip once a year. Sonny always tells us this on the show. They're all on a text, tra- uh, text chain thread. So I don't know why she would have gone to Sonny because there have been pictures of Sonny and Tiffany and all these other 
uh, black female journalists on these trips to Cabo and all the stuff they do every year. I have no idea why she thought going to discuss why she fired Tiffany to Tiffany's friend, Sonny, was the right decision. Um, But it says here that roughly 10 staffers witnessed Sonny Hostin an attorney and formal legal analyst for ABC News step off the stage and speak with Rashida in a hallway before the conclusion of the show. Jones was overheard explaining to Sonny that she had issues with Cross's on-air tone for close to a year before her termination. Three insiders familiar with the exchange said, After assessing Jones's unexpected appearance on their set, some higher ups at The View speculated that she had come that day with one goal, to avoid getting mentioned in the popular View segment hot topics, during which the panelists engage in oft heated debate and throw down strong opinions. Let me tell you, I won't read any more to you guys, but what they say here is that that particular day, and there's no telling who told Rashida this, because I'm sure... She has an insider there herself, but the view was actually scheduled to talk about Tiffany Cross's firing that day, the same day that Rashida showed up y'all. And somehow or another, they said here that the show chose not to talk about it that day. So there's, you know, the insiders here are kind of saying how surprised everybody was that Rashida showed up at a rival network, that she came there to escort her staff there, you know, Nicole Wallace for that day. But I wonder, someone would have had to have tipped her off that, listen, girl, they plan on talking about you today on this show. And a lot of you don't know this, but The View is the number one daytime talk show in America. They, they've they had this title now for the last two years. The New York Times did a cover story on the show a few years ago, and it was titled The Most Important Political Show on television. That means all those shows, the Joe and Mika, Micah, whatever you say her name is, because I don't watch those folks. All of these new shows that talk about politics, the view, according to the New York times is the, the number the most important political show out there. And so someone would have had to have tipped her off that they were planning to talk about it that day. They would have had to, she wouldn't have showed up. I don't think at least that day, you know, I don't, you know, coincidences are, are great and all of that, but you know, coincidences sometimes aren't coincidences. See, this seems very coincidental that the day that they were about to probably run her down, she showed up in the house and then they chose not cover that topic. You know what? I will say this. I really think that it could have been Sonny Hassan that tipped her off because Sonny is very, um, very concerned about how black women are portrayed in media. And one of the things that I know Um, that she did not like is the media pitting these two black women against each other, Rashida and Tiffany. If Rashida and Tiffany had issues, Sonny was not going to be the one to get on air and talk about that. So it's very possible that she tipped her off because I know because Sonny has said it when she was on Jamel Hill's podcast, Jamel is on Jamel Hill is unbothered. I played the clip for my other audience where we talk about the view every day. She said that the night before, They get a list of all the hot topics in a package. They get all the research. So every woman on that panel knows the night before, uh, you know, what they're going to discuss. Now, The View does have other black female producers. Um, They had an executive producer that was black. Her name was Candy Carter. Candy went to the Tamron Hall show. Some stuff went down over there. Now, Candy doesn't work for ABC anymore. She has her own thing that they're doing in the industry, but she's still very much out there. So it's possible that one of the other black female producers tipped off Rashida that they were going to discuss her that day. Because I'm telling you, had they discussed this, they would have had this story trending even more than it was because Tiffany and Sonny are friends. And so, guys, this was just very interesting for a number of reasons. Now, in this article, I will tell you, Matt Donnelly drops a whole lot of tea, as a lot of people call it. I'm not going to go through it all with you, but I will tell you, if you've been following this Tiffany Cross firing story, I highly encourage you to read it because the insiders tell him a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff. Um, There are now debates about whether Rashida um, defamed Tiffany when she was over there at The View. They spoke to her attorney, Brian Friedman. You know, we've been talking about Brian Friedman on these updates because Brian Friedman uh, has a reputation in the industry for representing a lot of these hosts 
who were fired from these shows. And it says here that Brian is looking at whether when she was over there at The View, talking to all these different people, trying to corner people, find out and say what she had to say, if she actually defamed her in the process because she is a network president. And so she was discussing what could have been private information about her employee that should have been kept confidential. So this is going to be a whole big mess. So in in essence, it seems to me that Rashida may not feel as confident about her decision to fire Tiffany. It seems that she wants to get a lot of people on her side, but I don't know, guys, maybe she has another motive for this. Like I said, what was she going to do with the information? Let's just say Whoopi would have talked to her. What was she going to do with that? Would she have leaked that conversation to the media? Is it possible she had a recording device on her? What was she going to do? What if Sonny would have said something against Tiffany that, yeah, Tiffany should have toned it down or whatever? What was she going to do with that information? Why did she, as the president of MSNBC, need to go talk to people who are very much below her stature when it comes to titles and positions? This is very interesting. And I will tell you, this is a developing story. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I'm going to let you go. I got to get out of here. Listen, y'all, this this thing seems to have more and more layers to it. Let us know what you think about this story. Drop down in the comments. Don't forget to do that. And listen, don't don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy hanging out with me. I'll talk to you guys on the next broadcast. Mm -hmm.